welcome to Sally Sewing Bee. I'm Sally Thompson and today I'm going to show you how to hand stitch leather but making the holes on your sewing machine first. So let me just come up to the table and I'll show you how. Okay, so um, you can just see the, the end of my little faff sewing machine here. I've prepared some leather um, in that they're the same size and I've put some rubber solution glue on both edges because I'm going to glue them together like so okay oops that's not very good <laughs> so I'll do that again that was rubbish okay just talk amongst yourselves while I try and stick two pieces of leather together okay so I'm going to put that underneath my machine. Right, let me tell you about, I've taken all the thread out of my sewing machine. There's nothing in the bobbin either. I've taken the bobbin and the bobbin case out of my machine. I've taken the thread out of my machine. There's nothing in it. Um, some sewing machines are so kind of technically advanced and they do all sorts of wonderful things that sometimes they have this special built-in thing that actually stops the machine from working when it recognises there's no thread. If you can't override that system, you'll have to have thread in it and then take it out, which sounds a bit odd because, you know, uh, the whole idea of this is to not use um, thread from your machine. But you'd have to do that, take it out, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I've got my machine set up. Oops, with me press a foot. Okay, don't normally um, stand up while sewing. I shall try and do my best. Okay, so empty machine. I've got a leather needle in my machine. And away we go. Yes, I'm sewing very slowly. And you know what? I don't think I'm sewing very straight. <laughs> because I'm not really concentrating. Okay, so that will do. Um, only because I'm showing you. If it was in real life, I'd be very, very careful. I don't know if you can see those holes. Yeah? Actually, shut up. You can see how crooked my line is. Okay, so you can see all the holes there, maybe. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. Got a needle and thread. The thread that I've got is Gutemann's upholstery thread. I really like it because it comes in a range of colours. And although you can use stuff like um, Gutemann Top Stitch, it's a bit fluffier. So I find this um, upholstery stuff um, looks better for longer and it doesn't kind of catch. So I've got a normal sewing needle and I'm just going to, there we go, look. How easy is that? I'm going to show you the running stitch. So I'm literally... putting the needle through, leaving a gap, just like a normal running stitch. I might just check my tension in a minute. Okay, I don't want it too tight. Um, this method is quite commonly used by Fendi. Uh, they use it on their, on some of their bags and it's, it is a deliberate artisanal effect and I think it's rather rather lovely so I'm just going to do a couple more um, the good thing is that it's really easy to see the holes in leather if I was doing this and there was suede on the back uh, it would be a little bit trickier because obviously suede has got quite a lot of um, texture to it so it's really difficult but I have done it but it's just not as easy Hey, I don't know if you can see that. I've done it in yellow deliberately on the pink leather, um, just so that you can see the effect. So it's kind of rather nice. Um, that's quite a big stitch. I was doing it, um, I did another little piece, which I'm going to show you in a moment, and I thought stitches were, were a bit small, but I think that, well, yeah, that's, that's fine. But I probably would go a tad smaller, to be honest. I don't normally sew on that size on my machine. The stitches actually look a lot bigger when they're in running stitch, so you'd be surprised um, how small your stitch can be. However, look at this. 
If I then do go back the other way, so I would call this a double running stitch. So I'm just going back on myself. It kind of makes the stitching look smaller again. So it looks sort of normal. And you can do it like this. So if you needed an effect where you wanted to look like it had been machine stitched, you can actually do this. Um, you might think, well, why would you do that? You just sew it up on your machine. Well, this wonderful machine of mine, my little faff, it won't take this thread. It's too thick for it. It just gets really upset and it just won't sew. So I would have to use dress fabric thread. As long as it's polyester, it's quite strong. But it doesn't look as thick as this. So I'm just going to show you this. This actually looks quite nice. Oops. Ooh, I did that a little bit too tight, that last one. So, so you can get an idea. That looks quite good as well, doesn't it? So that's double running stitch. Yeah? Double running stitch. So I've just gone back. That looks very nice. Yeah. Okay, so there is another way of doing um, stitching by hand. But say you wanted to look you wanted it to look like machine sewing because you'd done some machining and then you did something wrong and you needed to unpick it but you didn't want to unpick the whole lot but you thought if I just go back far enough if I pull it out of the holes where I went wrong um, I don't know your machine might have gone wrong or maybe you just stitched slightly incorrect, incorrectly you could just make another little hole maybe with your machine because say you'd gone a bit crooked so you could improve your line um, and you've, you've ended up with a thread one on the top one on the bottom so that'll be your machine thread so I'm just pretending that I've done that by machine I would then put my normal sewing needle through that hole oh, I think I might have missed the hole a bit I'm going to put my thread on top of my needle unless it looked like I needed to put it on the underneath. So can you see that? So I'm now going to go back through the hole. So I've caught this bit here. So I am in effect a human sewing machine. Okay, and that's through. So I want it to look like a normal stitch. So then I'll do that again. Put thy thread on the top and then go back and so on. And that can look pretty good. I'm just checking my tension so I can pretend that, you know, as a sewing machine, I'm altering my tension top and bottom. And I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So that's me being a human sewing machine. That small stitching, you see, I think that's too small, to be honest, um, unless I'd stitched like that. Um, but for my hand stitching generally, I would probably go for something like that, or maybe slightly smaller. Yep. You can play around with that. But you get some really nice effects. That's double running stitch. Okay. Well, I hope you found that useful. I do use hand stitching quite a lot. It's actually quite, I find it quite therapeutic. It's rather nice. It means you can just sort of sit down quite comfortably in a nice comfy chair after you've done all your other leather work and just stitch away. And it doesn't take as long as you might think. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can visit my Facebook page, Sally Sewing Bee, or you can email me on sally at gmail.com. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.